Hello, fourth graders. I hope that you're having a wonderful Thursday so far. We're getting through our first week of summer school. Uh, let's make sure everybody understands what we're doing with math, okay? So you've already found the video for today. That's fantastic. And that would be the first thing I would ask you to do on Wednesday and Thursday is find the video because I'm going to talk about our lesson for that day, okay? After you get that done, you have an assignment in your success maker. This week, the assignment is summer school, fourth grade, week one. Okay, so you're going to click on that and go through the things there. And you can do that more than once. But if you have extra time and you've completed that, you can just click on the regular math button in Success Maker 2 after you've done our, our lesson for the day if you have extra time. Because okay, there's other skills that you need, might need to go through, and that could uh, help you with that too. Okay? So today we are talking about properties and multiplication. And these properties are kind of rules or systems for solving problems that make them easier to do. Yesterday, we talked about the commutative and the uh, associative property of multiplication. The commutative property is when I have two numbers, I can change the numbers around and I'll get the same product. So three times five equals 15 and five times three equals 15. Doesn't matter which number comes first. Associative is kind of the same idea, except you have three numbers you're multiplying together, okay? And what really happens when you have three numbers and you're multiplying together, you can't multiply them all together at the same time. You always have to pick two to multiply first, and then you multiply the other one on. And the associative property said, it doesn't matter which numbers you pick first, and then the other one you multiply on, you're gonna get the same answer. If you're multiplying three numbers, it doesn't matter what order you put them in, what order you multiply, you're always gonna get the same product. Okay, now today we're going to talk about the distributive property. Distributive property is a slightly more complicated property. Distributive property basically says if you have big numbers that you're multiplying, you can break them up into smaller pieces, multiply them, and then add the pieces together. Okay, so what it does is it lets us take something that would have been a really, really complicated problem in some cases and make it into easier sections uh, and then combine those sections. Okay, so let's take a look at this idea. Let's say that you're trying to do six times eight. Okay, um, maybe you know that fact and I hope you do or, or maybe you don't. But what I can do is I can break it apart. So what I do is I look at my two numbers and I say six and eight. Eight's a little bit bigger, right? And I think... What are two numbers that I can add together and make eight that are easy for me to multiply? How about five and three, right? Five plus three is eight, right? So instead of multiplying six times eight, if I don't know what that is, I can multiply six times five plus six times three. Now that's a little bit complicated, so let me explain that again. I had six times eight right? Six times eight, and maybe I don't know what it is. Maybe eight's just too big for me to memorize all those multiples. But what I can do is I can break eight apart. In this case, I brought eight, eight, broke eight apart into five and three. I can multiply six times those two and then just add them together. Okay, so do you know what six times five is? Six times five is 30. Do you know what six times three is? I hope you do. Six times three is 18. Now, if I add those two pieces together, it'll be putting the whole gang back together again and I'll get six times eight. What is 30 plus 18? It is 48. So I can say six times eight equals 48. Okay, so this is the idea behind the distributed uh, property. Taking a bigger number, breaking it apart into pieces, and then putting it back together again. Now, the reality is, hopefully you knew what six times eight was. And more often, we use the distributive property for bigger numbers when we're trying to multiply. Okay, so let me give you an example like that. Um, it really comes, the distributive property really comes in handy when you're multiplying by two-digit numbers. Let's say I'm multiplying uh, 15 times 4. Okay, I'm going to multiply 15 times 4. And I'm going to use my distributive property. So Here's what the distributive property lets me do. It lets me take one of these numbers and break it up into two pieces. 
which number do you think I should break up? I think I should break up 15, right? Because that's a pretty big number. So I'm going to break 15 up into 10 uh, and 5. Okay, because 5 plus 10 is 15, right? And now I'm going to multiply both parts by 4. So I have 10 times 4, and I'm going to put that in parentheses, and I'm going to have 5 times 4, and I'm going to put that in parentheses also. All right, what is 10 times 4? Do you know your facts? It is 40. What is 5 times 4? Do you know your facts? It is 20. And now, if I were to add those pieces together, what is 40 plus 20? It is 60. Isn't that nice and easy? Just break it into two pieces, add the pieces together. 15 times 4 equals 60. You get the idea? Let's do another one. Let's say that I have, we'll go a little bit bigger this time, how about 17 times 7? We're getting up there into the big numbers. Right? All right, so 17 times 7. Uh, I'm going to break these numbers up, so i got to pick one of them to break up. Usually the smart move is to take the number that's more than one digit to break it up. So what can I break 17 up into? I don't need to get super creative. 17 is 10 plus 7. Right? And now that I've broken 17 up into two pieces, I'm going to multiply them both times 7. I have 10 times 7 and 7 times 7. Okay? So now the next things I got to do is a little bit of multiplication. What is 10 times 7? 10 times 7 is 70. And what is 7 times 7? Maybe you don't know that one. It is 49. Okay, so the last thing I need to do is just add those together. Zero plus nine is zero. Seven plus four is, I'm sorry, zero plus nine is nine. Seven plus four is 11. And I'm gonna get 119. Woo, that was a big one. Okay, so distributive property, it is just another property in math that is focused on breaking up our big numbers into easier pieces, multiplying and then adding them together. Okay, so it's a strategy that's used in different ways. Um, even when you're doing long division, you are in, uh, in a sense doing the distributive property because you're going one place value at a time. So you are still breaking it up. So we continue to use this distributive property as we get better and better in multiplication and division. Okay. Alrighty, I hope that is really helpful. Remember, after watching this video, I want you to get onto your success maker and, and you're gonna look for a summer school, fourth grade, week one. Same kind of thing we were working on yesterday. Okay, so some still skills to go through there. If you have everything, if you get all the way through that, just do your regular math success maker. Okay? Fantastic. I hope to see you at our Zoom meeting at 1030. Remember, bring a piece of paper. I want to do like a, a it'll be a quick little art project there. We'll do, we'll do also. Okay. I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope to see you at 1030 for our Zoom meeting.